We made it to the last day of 2023. This is December 31st. It is New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's to you folks. I sincerely hope you have a prosperous 2024. Hopefully we are done with the misery of 2023 and we're going to be asking for more in 2024. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the last day of the year, December 31st. Now, what we like to do in this show is focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. In other words, we're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that can make us money. Now, how do I find stocks that I think have potential to make us money? Well, in most cases, I'm looking at the charts. I find it quick and easy to see a chart that has heat, volume coming in, a breakout setup, a long running surge, easy to see very quickly. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I'll take the time to go through all the filings and the press releases looking for a catalyst, looking at today's news, last week's news, even a month ago, because it doesn't take a fresh big catalyst to get a hot chart moving. Any catalyst is going to work. So when I find a catalyst and I got a hot chart, I've got a hot penny stock that I can't wait to share with you. And I've got some doozies for the last day of 2023. Now here's a stock that is a buzzing online and catching attention. This is ticker GTLL Global Technologies. Now I can tell you it isn't the chart that's getting all the attention. Nothing to look at there. As you can see, the current price is at 0003. These triple zero stocks, especially the ones under triple zero five, they don't see a lot of price activity. You look at their charts, what you see are barcodes, picket fences going across the chart for long periods of time. I'm talking months, which is normally why I don't look at a stock under triple zero five. So why are we looking at GTLL at triple zero three? Because she had big news come out last week. She has just announced merger plans with a U.S. EV charging company that has a patent and plans to install EV chargers along our highways from coast to coast. Well, when I seen the buzz picking up online and I seen the volume picking up on the charts, I knew exactly what I had to do. I had to average down. <laughs> yeah, I'm invested in this company. I bought in just under a year ago and currently I am way down. Well, when I seen all of this happening, I figured it was time to average down, especially at that price. And boy, oh boy, folks, I was able to add 200% more shares for only 10% of what I've already invested. So now I have three times as many shares for just a little extra money. And though that sounds great, I still consider it a gamble. I am still leery if this is smart. Why? I'll tell you why, folks. GTLL is on the pink tier. Pink tiers give you no validated information. They are the riskiest stocks that you're going to invest in. And I speak from experience. I have been investing in penny stocks for five years and I came into penny stocks knowing nothing, absolutely nothing at all. And over the last five years, I have lost more money on pinks than any other tier by a long shot. I am talking tens of thousands of dollars, folks. So when you see good news on a pink, what you need to do is look at old news, old filings. See if they have a habit of making big deals, but not following through. Now, there's nothing wrong with playing any of these stocks as day trades. You can get those jumps and bumps. But if you're looking for a long-term hold, you don't want to get into a company that keeps breaking all the deals they keep making. So we're going to look at this company inside and out. Even though I'm invested in it, I'm not going to be biased. I want you to know the truth. So GTLL, she did finish the day at 0003 with over 114% gains. She is on the pink limited tier, which means that she is late on one or more of her financial filings. If they do not get those financials caught up in time, they will be yanked off of the OTC and thrown into the penalty box, which we call the expert market. It's not a delisting, it's a timeout. They will be stuck down there, their shares can't be bought or sold until they catch up with their filings. Once they get those financials in, they'll come back onto the open market. And here's the worst part. If you're invested in that company when they go on the expert market, your shares are locked up with them. You can't do anything with them until they come off that expert market. That's why we hate the expert market. 
They are delinquent SEC reporting. That is going with that Pink Limited. They need to get this information in. Validated information. We've got a transfer agent verified here. That's good to see. The other one is verified profile. We would like to see that. It's not here. So what is Global Technologies about? Well, we do get a description here, but this description is light, very light at best, may even be wrong. So we're going to get a lot more information, but we'll start here because it is a little bit of what they do. Global Technologies is a holding corporation, which through its subsidiaries has operations engaged in the online sales of CBD and hemp related products. The acquisition of intellectual property in the safety and security space and as a portal for entrepreneurs to provide immediate access to live shopping, e-commerce, product placement, and brick and mortar retail outlets in logistics. And as I said, we'll get more information when we look at the news. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Holy cannoli, folks. Look at that jump going from 30 million shares, she wasn't under the radar, up to 466 million shares. That's a lot of excitement wrapped around this company's news. Share structure for the company? Oh, bloody heck. We got a lot of shares here, folks. Outstanding share count is virtually everything they've got. They have just under 15 billion shares. They've got 14.6 billion on the market. The insiders own 1.3 billion of them. Thank God for that. But that leaves us with a ton of shares, folks. 13.3 billion shares. And their market cap, that is at 4.4 million. Financials for the company. Well, the numbers are everywhere. Back in 2020, we were at $548,000. We know that's thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Dropped down to 15,000 in 2021. And in 2022, they came back up to 124,000, which is way down from two years ago. But the good news is they are pulling in profit every single year. Looking at the quarterly reports, well, as you can see, we're missing some here, and that's what you get with Pink Limited, missing financials. Now, I did check. They did just file their June quarterly reports. That was at $17,000 as well. They're not making very much money, are they? Balance sheet for the company. Not very much money over here either. Cash and cash equivalents. How much they got in the bank? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing in the bank. Total assets, $412,000. Total liabilities is four times that at 1.6 million, which gives us stockholder deficit, not equity, of 1.2 million. Looking at the disclosures for the company. Now we need to take a look at this Pink Limited situation. How many financials is she laid on? So we come on over here to the SEC filings. This shows us the filings, when they file, and for what period they filed. And I can see right now we got two late filings on their financials. And interestingly enough, these are 10Ks and 10Qs on the pink. These are not disclosures. These are audited financials, which is a great thing to see on the pinks. So they tell us they were going to be late with their annual report and they were going to be late with their quarterly report. That bought them an extra 15 days and an extra five days, which they didn't make which is how they ended up being pink limited information. Now we got a 10K here. The annual report just came out uh, on the 29th. That just came out two days ago. So now we've only got one financial that is late. That is the quarterly report for September, the 10Q. Once they get that out and it's approved, that pink limited will fall away and it will be coming pink again, which everybody's gonna be glad to see. All right. Now we do have an 8K here. This is the most recent piece of news. They did not put it out in a press release. As a matter of fact, if you come over here to the news on the OTC, they don't show any news for this company. But there's lots of news. As you can plainly see, we got lots of news over here. And we're gonna come back and headline this, but we're gonna start off with the most current piece of news and work our way back. So this first piece is the one that came out last week, the hot news that's got everybody excited. The company had entered into a letter of intent to acquire Go E3. Now this is gonna become a subsidiary of GTLL, but the curious thing is 
GTLL is only going to own 30% of the combined company, where Go E3 is going to own 70% of the combined company. Not to mention that the president of Go E3 is going to become the president of GTLL. Sounds like a change of control to me. Now they tell us after this happens, they are planning on filing for an uplisting. So that's in the plans, but they haven't put in the filing yet. Everybody says this, folks. Until you see the filing, don't bet on that. They tell us that the management from both companies have already agreed on this, and they do believe they can close it in the first quarter of 2024, which starts tomorrow. Now, they do have their scapegoat clause in here. You'll find this in all press releases where they're talking about deals, mergers, acquisitions. There can be no assurance that the proposed transaction will be completed as currently contemplated or at all. Now, don't take that with a grain of salt. When it comes to pinks, that happens more often than not. So let's get a little bit of information here about Go E3. The company started all the way back in the year 2000. They tell us that they intend on building and operating a network of universal electric vehicle charging stations within 45 to 75 miles of selected interstate highways across the U.S. 45 to 75 miles off the highway? Well, who the heck wants to get off the highway and drive that many miles to get their electricity? That sounds a little extreme. They go on to say the company believes that its patent pending charging station design will be a vital component to the electric vehicle charging station expansion. Now, from what I understand, they're doing something different than any other electric charging station is doing. They have multiple attachments. Not all cars can use the same attachment to charge up. If you're a Tesla, you got to use a Tesla attachment. If you're some other car, Tesla attachment won't work. So they've got multiple attachments on there. Plus they've got the screen. They are going to be bringing money in through advertising. Now I know the company's already installed some of these electric chargers in Arizona. I don't know if they have them anywhere else. Now they tell us that they connect these to solar power. I wasn't able to find out if they actually install the solar panels or they have another company that does that for them. And of course, they tell us they have an app that connects all of these chargers, connects to you so you can find a charging unit, pay for your fuel, all of that stuff. The problem is, I can't find that. I went to Google, I went to Apple, I could not find any Go E3 app unless they've got it under another name. So that is the big news, and I think it's very hot, especially if it's serious. Now, jumping into the, uh, oh, and I do want to show this to you. They said it was patented. It is. Just put in the company's ticker, go to Google, ask for a patent. It'll bring it to you, folks. They got pictures here showing you about their design, how they're going to lay it out, and there's a lot of information here. So if you're curious, this will satisfy it, I'm sure. So jumping back over into that news. The most recent piece of news after this was a few months ago, back in June. However, this is big news and something has happened here. They tell us that the company signs agreement to acquire a real estate holdings company. They tell us here that Global Technologies, an operating company focused on acquiring distressed properties in the real estate sector, proudly announces a signing of an agreement to acquire real estate development company whose portfolio consists of 250,000 square foot industrial facility situated on a 25 acre property in Georgia. Now, as you can see in the picture there, it is a big building. It's a big manufacturer that is not being used right now. And the price I found was something like uh, 6.2 million or something like that. Well, when I did the math for that amount of square footage, it came out to $24 a square foot. Folks, that's a bargain. That is like one fifth the value of the place. Right now, industrial square footage property goes for $125 to $130 a square foot. So this is a great investment that they have made. Now, let's start rolling the clock backwards here. I'm just going to headline this news very quickly because I want to show you what's going on with it. All right, we're going to just start right here and no, we'll start from the bottom. I think it makes more sense. We are back to November of last year. 
I want to look at all of these. Taurus Power. Global Technologies and Taurus Power travel together on the hydrogen highway. So we got electricity and hydrogen. They've got more news here in December about Terrace Power. Another one here in December, Terrace's Power sees revenue being generated through multiple channels. Terrace's Power announces development of first of its kind proactive hydrogen production software solution. This is all sounding great to me. And then right here, the company and Terrace's Power enter into a definitive share exchange agreement. They're going to merge as well. Sounds great. Right above, right below that one is another deal in February. Markets on Main enters master distribution agreement and marketing management agreement with the company. And right here, Global Technologies to spin off its wholly owned subsidiary Markets on Main to shareholders in a stock dividend. There's lots of news here, folks. The problem is they're not following up. They tell you what they plan on doing, and then they don't tell you if they did it, when they did it, how they did it. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. I have got, where is it? Right here. I have jumped into the most recent financial. We started off talking about that CBD company. Remember, that was the very first thing. The name of it, I, I guess this is pronounced Home North. There's no vowels in it. Well, they tell us that Home North operates as an online store selling a variety of hemp and CBD related products. At present, the company does not have the required capital to move forward with any of the options and there is no guarantee that we will be able to raise the required funds. The problem with the CBD industry, there's too much competition. There's too many laws and regulations. They're afraid that they may break a law by accident, that there may be recalls, that there may be lawsuits. They're really not attracted to this opportunity anymore. And it looks like they are just flushing it away. Another one of their subsidiaries we never talked about was 911 Help Now. 911 was a holding company of intellectual property in the safety and security space. At present, we own no intellectual property. We just got done reading about markets on Main. They were going to spin this out and give us some free shares. Well, this is known as Mom Markets on Main. Mom is a full service sales and distribution third party logistics provider and portal to multi-channel sales opportunities. Mom entered into an exclusive distribution agreement with Amfluent. They also entered into an agreement with uh, QVC. So they had a lot going on there. Well, they launched their first product at the beginning of 2022. Mom launched its first website, sculptbaby.com, under the agreement with Chin. Product sales initiated on March 2022, and during uh, the fourth quarter of 2022, all Scott Baby inventory was sold. The company has not identified its next product to launch. And you go look up ScottBaby.com, it's gone. So they have no more products for uh, markets on Maine. I doubt they're going to spin it out if they're not making any revenues, right? So there aren't going to be any dividends for anybody. They're not telling us any of this, that this deal failed through, that they don't have anything. 911 has no property, that they're getting out of CBDs, but we're not done yet, folks. What about that Tercis Power merger? Surely, with all the news they gave us there, that's about ready to close. Well, this plan of merger, which was to take effect, was even going to change their name, the company elected to terminate the share exchange agreement with Tercis Power. It does not anticipate any operations under its wholly owned subsidiary. So that's a bust too. Everything except the new facility, that 250,000 square foot factory, and maybe the merger with Go E3. But everything else is dead in the water. They're holding a bunch of dead fish in their hands. And just a couple more facts to give you some more perspective about the company. For the years ended June 30th, 2023 and 2022, we had nothing invested into development costs. 
They aren't even looking for ways to make money. They haven't even spent a dime on development. That's not exciting. And the last piece of information, currently Global Technologies has one full-time employee. That's it, folks. So we've got big news. It is a big merger. It could be hot as heck. I was looking to see how many more electric chargers the company has put up since 2012. That's been 13 years, 14 years now. I couldn't find any more. So I don't know what's going on. Obviously, some more research needs to be done here. They've had a lot of deals that they said they were going to do. None of them really panned out. They did just get this huge factory. That should pan out. Whether they're going to use it for themselves, lease it, sell it, I don't know. But they should make a good profit on that. And then they've got the merger. Keep your fingers crossed that at least this one they're going to follow through with. Let's go take a look at this chart. Let's do some charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're taking a look at ticker GTLL. This is Global Technologies, and we are looking at a six-month, four-hour view. And as I told you, at this price zone, what you get are barcodes, picket fences going sideways for months at a time. Now, before we dive into her chart, I wanted to mention something about that uplisting to the NASDAQ. If they're serious about that, that would be great, right? Or would it? Right now, their price is triple zero three. To get onto the NASDAQ, you've got to be $3. Well, there's only two ways to get the price up that high. We, the investors, have to bid it up. What are the chances of that happening? Or the company can do a reverse split. Now, they have the shares to do it. They got 14 billion shares with a 1 in 10,000 reverse split. They could get us to $3. And we would have left 1.4 million outstanding, which is going to leave us a super duper small float, which is exciting. The problem is, is if you got in before the reverse split at that 1 to 10,000 ratio, you haven't got any shares left to even talk about. So that is food for thought. So looking at the chart, six month, four hour view. It was six months ago in April, she was on the floor. The absolute lowest you can go on the open market, triple zero one. In June, she had jumped 400% up to triple zero four. Then coming back down, she's been bouncing between triple zero one and the two over and over and over again until here recently, she had, I do mean Friday, she jumped from triple zero two up to the three, which gave us a 50% jump. Now, she could have been all the way down here at the one the day before, which would have given us over 100% gains. But we're not going anywhere fast, but we do have catalyst. She has a chance of moving. And looking at our oscillators, you can see on top of the strong volume, we had a lot of oomph being put into these oscillators. They are all pushing up right now. Coming down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Not anything extra to look at here. You can see she jumped up to that three and she's bouncing now between two and three, two and three. She could do that for a very long time. We really need some buzz to pick up online, some people to start tweeting about it. Then this may get up to four or five. And if she can break triple zero five, we could see a run. Oscillators are still very strong. Look at that, folks. Literally going to the moon right now. Looking at our five day, five minute, again, there's not anything extra to see except for the fact our SMAs are all in place here. Our 200, well below the price. She is riding on all of her other SMAs and though they're knotted up here, she's in the right zone. She's in the right place. It's tough to get technicals in these triple zero stocks. There's just not a lot going on right now. At this very moment, I can see that all of our oscillators bounce down and are now working up and our nine day SMA is bouncing off of the 20 pushing up. You're going to want to do some more research here, folks. This is probably going to be a good day trader stock. I'm not sure about the long hold though. Looks like this company has dropped the ball many times in the past. So again, with pinks, you got to take big news with a grain of salt. Still though, I would be putting GTLL on my watch list. Well, it's already on mine. I own it. So put it on your watch list. 
Now here's a stock we got to put our eyeballs on right now while it's the new year season. This is ticker ABQQ, AB International Group. Now her chart looks great. She's been running since October 10th, going from a low of 0002 to over 003. You're looking at over 1,500% gains there in about two and a half months. And it looks like she's going to keep going. And she's got good calls. We've got lots of catalysts. We've got some strong insider buys and we've got some fresh news. So ABQQ on Friday finished at 0026 with almost 10.5% loss. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's only got one of those green ticks we're always talking about, the transfer agent verified. She hasn't got a verified profile. Not a deal breaker, but I would like to see it there. So what is ABQQ all about? Well, they are headquartered here in the United States, but they primarily do their business in Asia and in China. They are in the movie business. And right now is a perfect time to be releasing movies in China because as it is custom in China, Everybody wants to go to the movies on New Year's Eve. I am talking about millions and millions and millions, maybe a billion people, literally, go to the movie theaters on New Year's Eve. And this company has a hot movie that they're releasing, and we're going to be talking about that here in just a few minutes. Now, behind the movie, they also sell NFTs. And this is where they make their big money. After they have a hot movie, they sell these collector's items that are one of a kind that can go up in value in time. So what was the relative volume around the company today? What? <laughs> are you kidding me? She dropped what, like 70%? Going from 100 million shares down to 28 million shares. Not what I was expecting. Share structure. Wow. Not what I was expecting. That's a ton of shares, folks. Outstanding share count is 2.5 billion. Insiders own about 336 million of them. We get the rest, 2.2 billion. Now, when I seen this many shares, the first thing I wanted to know is, do you guys have a reverse split plan? So I went digging around. They did. They had a 1 in 10,000 reverse split on the books, but they canceled it. No more. So we don't have to worry about that at this point in time. Market cap for the company, 6.6 .6 million. Financials for ABQQ. All right, they have taken a big jump in revenues, haven't they? Whether it be a half a million or 115,000, they are now up at $3 million. The problem is they're not making any money. They lost $293,000 making more money than ever. Quarterly reports, well, again, it really doesn't matter how much money they're making because they're not getting to keep anything. They're losing money quarter after quarter. That's not looking good. Balance sheet for the company. They've got some money in the bank, about $134,000. Total assets, $3.2 million. Total liabilities is less, yes, $1.7 million. So that gives us positive shareholder equity of $1.5 million. Not bad. Looking at the disclosures for the company. We've got lots of Form 4s over here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares. We're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. These are purchases, big purchases. Now, rather than jump in each one of them, I've just brought them all together on one page to make it easy for us. These were all bought by the same person, Dang Chayun, which is the chief executive officer. You got to pay attention to these buys. We got three of them on three different days. On December 11th, the CEO purchased 151 million shares at 001. On December 14th, he purchased 43 million more at 0016. And on the 20th, he purchased 7.5 million shares at 002. Add that all up, you are over 200 million shares he just bought. Do you think there's a reason? I think it's the movie myself. <laughs> Honestly, I do. So let's take a look at the news. Now, I don't have any current news here. This is all old. Most current piece is April of this year, and it goes back to September of last year. But there is a lot of information here that gives you some perspective on what the company's doing. Back in September, the company announces it entered an NFT MMM license agreement with Me Metaverse Inc. 
They also obtained a license from United Artists. They got a license from Warner Brothers. They announced that they are launching a NFT for the movie Love Over the World. And they announced another NFT launch for the movie On the Way. And I'm sure they're going to have NFTs for their newest movie, which is Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour. Now, they had a very difficult time getting this approved. There has never been a concert movie in China, ever. So this is a big deal. And being Taylor Swift, she has a huge audience, folks. I am sure the movie is going to do great. But how big do you think the NFTs are going to be? I think they're going to be outstanding. Now, jumping on over to Twitter. This is where we got most of the information because it wasn't in news presses. Here on December 4th, they start talking about it. This is going to be an IMAX film. Advanced ticket sales start today, December 22nd. Appreciate the collaboration teams and China Film Group distribution. Alibaba assists in promoting. It's right there. Look at this, Alibaba. Isn't Alibaba just selling goods online? Is this the same Alibaba company working in the entertainment industry? I bet they are. That is a huge company. And they tell us here that currently there are already over 450,000 people bidding on the two ticketing platforms wanting to watch the movie. That was December 20th, 11 days before the movie. You already had a half a million people bidding on tickets. Oh, poor people. They just can't buy a ticket. So that's what you got going on here, folks. There's a lot of competition over in China right now tonight. There is another company, HKD. That is the ticker for a public company. They got a movie being released over there tonight called Shiny. So I am thinking this movie is probably going to be the big movie of the year, which means they're going to make a lot of money, which means there's going to be a lot of buzz after the holiday about the movie. And that's when the NFTs will start to go on sale. I think it's worth putting on your watch list. But before you do that, let's go take a look at the chart. <laughs> Looking at a six month, four hour view of ABQQ. We've got our ultimate low back here in May of triple zero one. She was underneath all of the SMAs. Slowly started working away towards that 200. You can see she's getting closer and closer. Here in September, we had some strong volume pops along with some good price activity. And then in October, she decided to really start climbing. October 10th, she pushed away from the 200-day SMA and settled in on her 50-day SMA. You can see her bouncing on that all the way here to the 11th of December when she decided to get on her 9-day SMA and push all the way to 0035. She has now fallen back to the 20, which is better than coming back to the 50, bounced off of that, and all day Friday she was falling, and right now she is just hovering over the 20, Hopefully, she's going to bounce off of it. All of our SMAs are looking pretty decent. They're all curved up and starting to climb. Volume was very light today. And all of our oscillators are weak and falling. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So, we've got our low here of 0009 20 days ago. We are on top of the 200. It was on the 11th that she pushed away from the 50, started bouncing on this 20. After hitting the high, she did a rubber ball bounce, came down underneath the 50 like a rubber ball in water, and then came back up on top and jumped, came back down, and right now we are sitting perfectly on that 20-day SMA. The only problem is the price is underneath the 9-day SMA. We got to get on top of the 9 if we want to climb. We do have good direction on our 200-day SMA. It is climbing up. All of our SMA here, they're weak as well, not falling as fast, but they still don't show any strength. Five day, five minute. She's going across the board the hard way, right? You can see my line right there from one side to the other. She isn't going far. She fell to a low of 0021, hit that high of 0032, and came right back down to the 200. Looked like she was going to sit on it, but she has taken a dip here, folks. And this is a little bit scary, this one. She has dragged her 9-day underneath that 200-day SMA, and the price is underneath the 9-day. And all of our oscillators still look weak. The chart on the 4-hour looks like she has a chance. 
all the other charts look pretty weak. Though we've got a lot of catalysts here, we're going to have to keep our eye on this one. I'm presuming that when you see the volume come in, you're going to see this thing take off. But remember, she's got a ton of shares, so it's going to take a lot of volume to move her. ABQQ. Let's give it up for Taylor Swift. Oh man, I am bumming. I had three hot stocks I wanted to share with you tonight, but it doesn't look like I'm going to have enough time. I guess I just talk too much. Or maybe I need the extra time to party tonight. It is New Year's. But you're going to want to take a look at that third stock. The ticker is MNMD, Mind Medicine. They just successfully passed their phase two trial for their drug with the FDA. Their drug, it's called LSD. <laughs> I'm not kidding, folks. It's acid. The purest form of LSD has just successfully passed phase two trial with the FDA. Why? Because it's very beneficial. We are discovering that LSD can help, if not cure, a lot of mental health issues. And personally, I think it's going to make a ton of money. It's going to make cannabis look like chump change. And they did over $20 billion last year. So I've given you three hot stocks. We've only looked at two, but I've given you three. GTLL, crossing our fingers, that Go E3 merger is completed. ABQQ, I think Taylor Swift is going to break China's bank tonight. And then you've got MNMD. You got to do your own due diligence there. But of course, you need to do due diligence on all three of them. I did not cover everything, even with all the talking I did. Thanks for showing up, folks. I don't know if you're watching this New Year's Eve or afterwards, but I appreciate you being here. Happy New Year's to you, and I'll be talking to you next year. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.